There he goes into that drugstore. He's stepping on the scales. Weight, 239 pounds. Fortune, danger. Who is it? The Fat Man. the fat man in Murder Makes a Ham. The day had been hot and murky. Not the sort of day to spend at a desk answering letters. But it had to be done. The afternoon had dragged slowly by while I pounded the typewriter. The sun sank out of sight and the street noises began to die down. The silence in the hall outside my office told me the rush hour was over. And the emptiness in my stomach told me it was time to quit and get some chow. I looked at my watch. It was just six o'clock. I closed the typewriter. Hello? Is this Mr. Runyon? That's right. Mr. Runyon, I want to hire a detective. Could you come to the stage entrance of a mail theater tonight at 11.30? I'm just closing the office. Can't I wait until tomorrow? No. No, no, no. It can't wait until tomorrow. It's very important. Uh, tell me what the job is. I've lost something. Something very valuable. I... I think it's been stolen. I've got to get it back. Will you take the job? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, thank you. Then you'll be at the mail theater tonight? Why the theater? I work there. An actress? Yes, you you must have heard of me. Linda Lane, I'm starring in the jinx at the mail. Sure, I've heard of you. Come to my dressing room tonight at 11.30. I'll leave word with the doorman to let you in. What's been stolen, Miss Lane? A picture. A picture? You mean a painting? No, Mr. Runyon, it isn't a painting. It's a photograph. I thought you said it was valuable. It is valuable. Very valuable. What's it a photograph of? It's a photograph of me, Mr. Runyon. Hey, driver. Yeah? Yeah. Somebody dropped a hundred-dollar bill on the seat of your cab. Yeah, it belongs to you. Pull up, Santa Claus. This isn't the way to Charlie's Chop House. You're not going to Charlie's Chop House, Mr. Runyon. You're going on a business trip. I pick my own business trip. Not this time. Now take it easy and relax. Stick the century note in your pocket. There's a lot more where that came from. Nothing will happen to you if you just keep nice and quiet. And if I don't... <laughs> We're going pretty fast. I'd hate to crack up with you in here. The boss wouldn't like it. Who's the boss? You'll find out soon enough. Now sit back and take it easy. We got a long ride ahead of us, and I don't like driving with one hand. Makes me nervous, so this gun might go off accidentally. <laughs> is it. Come on. Pretty fancy layout for a taxi driver. Inside. That door straight ahead. That's locked. Uh, it's probably stuck. Here, let me... <coughs> oh, my oh, foot! Let's have that gun. Let go my arm. Oh, there. There. <sighs> Now, let's have a look at you. I think you broke my foot. You're lucky it wasn't your head. I don't like gun toters, and I don't like missing my dinner. You dumb dick. You're getting a break, and you don't know it. I'll decide that. <laughs> for such a wise guy, you're a pushover for an old trick. Now, let's go in, and this time, you lead the way. Right down this hall. Mr. Runyon's here. Bring him in. After you, son. Oh, good work, Bert. I, uh... 
night. What happened? Sit down, both of you. He got my gun. <laughs> oh, the fine bodyguard you turn out to be, Bert. Yeah. Kidnapping isn't anything to laugh at. Oh, calm now, Mr. Runyon. Put that gun down. Where's your sense of humor? It's probably in the restaurant where I was going to eat dinner when this punk pulled his kidnap act. You haven't eaten? Uh, Bert, fix Mr. Runyon a sandwich. I'm sorry. Just a second, Bert. A sandwich isn't my idea of a meal, and this business isn't my idea of a joke. Now start talking. What's it all about? I'd prefer it if Bert... Bert stays. Well, I'm listening. I want to hire you, Mr. Runyon. I've got an office and I've got a telephone. I'm afraid you don't understand. I'm funny that way. You don't recognize me? Should I? <laughs> well, a lot of voters would. My name is Tom Graham. Yeah, it fits the face. Washington, huh? Yes, Mr. Runyon, Washington. Okay, Graham. What do you want me to do? First, do you mind now if Bert leaves? Okay. Here's your gun, Bert. Next time, hold it closer to your stomach and watch my feet, not my eyes. There won't be any next time. I'll call you if I want you, Bert. Yes, sir. I'm being blackmailed, Runyon. You can imagine what that means to a man in my position. Is it a frame job or the real thing? Unfortunately, it's the real thing. You know who it is? A woman I used to know rather well. A woman whose reputation wouldn't help a man running for public office, or a man who was marrying the daughter of one of our most prominent families. That is? No, a picture. What's wrong with the picture? It was taken at a party, a very wild party, which I had the misfortune to attend several years ago. In the picture, I am quite obviously drunk, and this woman is sitting on my lap with her arms around my neck. Has she got the negative? No, only a print, a large one, eight by ten. The picture was taken by a professional photographer. He was a decent sort of fellow, so I explained my position to him, and he gave me the negative and all the prints he had. Unfortunately, he'd already given one print to this woman. Didn't you try to get it? Of course. And she said she'd lost it. And that was three years ago. I forgot all about it until today. This typewritten note came in the mail this morning. Here. Yeah. Several newspapers would gladly pay big money for a certain photograph. You know the one I mean. Political opponents of yours might also be interested. I think it is worth 10000 to you. If this is agreeable, insert the following ad in the personal section of the Daily Banner. John accepts. You will then receive further instructions. What makes you so sure it's the woman, and how do you know the picture is really in existence? I'm sure it's she, because I know her. She's that type, and she's extravagant. She probably needs money. You said you were getting married. Yes, next week. I'm marrying Judge Moorhead's daughter, Sylvia. If this picture is made public, I'll be ruined. You want to pay off, then? Yes, of course. In that case, what do you want me for? I want you to make sure I get the picture when I pay the $10,000. Okay, Graham. Where can I find this woman? You can find her at the Mayo Theater. She's an actress named Linda Lane. And Miss Lane wasn't expecting you until 11.30 at the final curtain. It's okay. I have to come early. I guess you can wait in her dressing room. She comes off stage for a few minutes pretty soon. I'll tell her you're there. It's the first dressing room up the stairs. Thanks. Mr. Runyon. Yeah. You shouldn't have come early. I told you 11.30. Yeah, I know. Come on in here and close the door. Well, I, I've only got a minute or two. It won't take long. Tell me about this photograph. I didn't tell you the entire truth, Mr. Runyon. It wasn't just a picture of me. There is a man in the picture, too, a very prominent man. Why did you keep a thing like that? Well, I didn't intend to, really. It was taken several years ago, and I, I, I thought I'd lost it. A couple of days ago, I was going through this trunk, and I found it. I was going to tear it up, but... But what? Well, I must have slipped my mind. This afternoon, I came to the theater to get it, and it was gone. Why didn't you tear it up when you first found it? I told you it that... It couldn't have been because you thought of using it to blackmail this guy, could it? Of course not. But don't you see that's just exactly what I'm afraid is going to happen now. Somebody saw that picture and recognized the man. 
They saw a chance to make some money, and so they stole the picture. That's why we must get it back. It's going to be tough. Do you suspect anybody? No, I don't know who it might be. You see, so many people come in and out of here. My maid, the doorman, friends. Okay, I'll give it a whirl, but don't be too hopeful. By the way, how well did you know this prominent man, and who is he? Well, of course, this is confidential. Of course. The man is Thomas Graham, and I knew him very, very well at one time. How did you break up? What do you mean? Were you sore at each other? Oh, no, we just called it a day, that's all. I'm still very fond of Tommy. That's why I'd hate to have anything happen that might hurt him. I'm sure you understand, Mr. Runyon. Yeah, I understand. Oh, I've got to dash. I've only got 30 seconds to get on. You'll hear from me. Yes, yes, thank you. I'm sorry I have to rush off. You can come out of the closet now, honey. She's gone. I said you can come out now. She's gone. How did you know I was in here? You left your pocketbook on the chair. Her initials are LL. The ones on this pocketbook are SM. That could mean Sylvia Moorhead, does it? Yes. Yes, it does, but how did you know? I'm psychic. Do you think she saw the pocketbook? No, I sat on it. Are you looking for the photograph? Yes. She's lying to you. What makes you think she's lying about the picture being stolen from her? You didn't find it, did you? No, it's not here, but she's got it somewhere. How do you know? Well, why else would she send me this note? Let me see it. Here. There is a certain photograph of your future husband in my possession. If it should fall into the right hands, it would ruin him. I'm sure you'll want to buy it for $10,000. If so, place the following ad in the personal column of the Daily Banner. George, come home, and you'll receive further instruction. What makes you think Miss Lane typed this note? Well, I wasn't sure when I first got it this evening, but I know more about Tom's past than he thinks I do. I knew about this actress, and I came here to get the picture. Don't you see? She, she's only hired you as a blind. Are you going to put the ad in the paper? No, I'm not sure yet. But I can tell you one thing. I'll never pay her a cent of blackmail. I'll kill her first. Oh, it's you, huh? How's the hook, Bert? I haven't forgotten it. Is your boss here? Yeah, he'll be down. Oh, just... come in, Runyon. Uh, come in. Uh, I've been waiting for you. Uh, we can talk in the library. Anything happened since I saw you last night? I put the ad in this morning's paper. Yes, I got another note. Here it is. They don't trust you much. No. What should I do? If you're going to pay for the picture, I guess you'll have to do what the note says. Leave the money on the head sooner this guy Fenway's grave at midnight. Can you get the ten grand in cash by tonight? I've already got it. But uh, what about the picture? Don't worry, I'll get it for you. Do you still think it's the actress? Yes. Why? I'm not so sure. She says somebody stole the picture from her two or three days ago. But uh, who could have stolen it? Uh, who wrote the notes? Any number of people. It might have been the doorman. Or her maid. Or... Or who? Who else do you think it might be? It might be your fiance, Miss Sylvia Moorhead. finding the grave? No, it was right where the note said it would be. I put the money in the envelope on the headstone. You didn't hear or see anything? No. Then I walked out the west gate and came around here. That was nearly 20 minutes ago. Okay, we'll wait another 10 minutes. That'll be a half hour since you put the money on the grave. If they're playing on the level, the picture should be there by the time we walk over. But suppose it isn't. We'll have to take that chance for the time being. If it isn't there, then we start playing rough. I don't like it. Hold it a second. Quick, put your cigarette out. 
Get back here with me. Whoever it is is running for the street. It's a woman. See if you can recognize her as she goes by. It's pretty dark. Could you recognize her? Yes. Yes, I recognized her. The actress? No, Runyon. It was Sylvia. <laughs> Understand it, Runyon. If Sylvia's behind all this, what's the reason? There could be only one reason, Graham. What? Money. But that's absurd. The Moorheads are very wealthy. Does she have money of her own, or is it just the family? I, I don't know. I, I never thought about it that way. If she has to go to her father for money, and if she has some dirty linen of her own... But not Sylvia. She's not that sort of girl. Look deep enough, Graham, and you'll find out that everybody has at least one secret. You're not alone with your past. I can't believe it of Sylvia. We should have stopped her back there, Runyon. I think it's better this way. First, let's see if the picture is there. We can always find Sylvia. The grave should be near here. Uh, yes, it's uh, right over behind that crypt near the big tree. Okay. Wait here a second and I'll take a look. picture there? No. And neither is the money. But there's something else here. What? The dead body of your friend, Linda Lane. You've got to tell me the whole story, Brad. Well, Mac, I found the body. She was a client of mine. I don't know who killed her or why. Yet. What did the medical examiner find out? Skull fractured and strangulation. Death could have come from either one. She put up a terrific fight. The killer is probably marked. Scratched? Yeah, the doc found skin under her fingernails. Who was with you when you found the body, Brad? I can't tell you that, Mac, but I don't think it was the murderer. Was it another client of yours, too? Yep. This is murder, Brad. Client or no client, unless you come clean with me, I'll have to arrest you for concealing evidence. I can't do you any good in jail. Look, there's a lot more in this business than you think. Yeah, it's messy, all right. Blackmail always is. Oh, so that's it. That's it. The names involved are top bracket. If we go off half-cocked and are wrong, it might ruin these people. I can handle the newspapers, if that's what you mean. That's what I mean. Okay, we'll keep it as quiet as long as possible. Now, who's your client? Tom Graham. Hey. The actress was blackmailing him. Then he must have killed her. He had the motive, and he even had the opportunity, but I don't think he did it. His fiancée, Sylvia Moorhead, is mixed up in it, too. She was in the graveyard last night, about the time of the murder. Now we're getting someplace. Did Graham make a payoff last night? Yes, and that's another angle. Whoever killed Linda Lane got the $10,000. And whoever it was knew her well enough to hate her and to be afraid of her. I'll have him bring in Graham and the Moorhead girl. Get the girl first. Let Graham alone for the time being. Bring Sylvia in and hold her here until I get back. Where are you going? I'm going to find a man. Where? At the Marriage License Bureau. No, no, I tell you, I didn't kill anybody. What were you doing in the graveyard last night? But I wasn't in it's the... It's no good, Miss Moorhead. Both Graham and I saw you running toward the street just before the body was found. But he... Couldn't have been Tom, not if you were with him. I wasn't with him all the time. He could have killed Miss Lane. Lying won't do any good. You better tell us what happened last night. What were you doing in the graveyard? Oh, all right, I was there last night, but I didn't kill Miss Lane. I didn't. Why did you go to the graveyard? I showed you the note I got. Yep. Well, after I talked to you, I, I changed my, my mind. I decided to pay. I put the ad in yesterday morning's paper, and yesterday afternoon I got a phone call. A phone call? Yes. Did you recognize the voice? No. I was told to get $10,000 in cash and take it to the graveyard last night. I was to leave it on the grave of a man named Fenway. Half an hour later, I was to come back and get the photograph from the same place. How did you get that much cash? I pawned a diamond bracelet and some other jewels. And then last night, it... Must have been about midnight. I went to the graveyard. 
I had some trouble finding the grave, and I was later than the designated time. I was just walking up to the big crypt underneath the trees when I heard a peculiar choking groan. What did you do? I was frightened, and for a second I, I just stood there. I, I couldn't see this man Fenway's grave, so after a few seconds I tiptoed over to the crypt and looked around. And there, lying across the grave, was the body of a woman. It was Linda Lane. Did you see anything else? Yes. I saw the figure of a man running towards the west gate. He was too far away for me to recognize. I only saw his back anyway. But you thought it was Graham? Well, yes, I thought it must be Tom. And then you turned and started running yourself? No, no, no. Not, not just then. What did you do? Well, I fainted. I, I came to about 15 minutes later. That's when I started running. So you see, it couldn't have been Tom if he was with you and saw me running. Lieutenant McKenzie speaking. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, Kelly, good work. Well, that cinches it. What happened? Graham isn't home, so I sent some of the boys out to look around a little. They just found something very interesting hidden in this library. What? The photograph. <laughs> I wish you'd hold off on this arrest a little longer, Mac. It's two paths. Brad, you're always trying to make things out of nothing. Now listen, big shot or no big shot, murder is still murder. It all fits. The actress was blackmailing him. Graham couldn't have been the man she saw in the graveyard. He was with me when she ran past us. Why would she lie? She's in love with him. Maybe. Yeah, but she really pawned her jewels. We checked on everything. Ah, uh -uh, Brad, you're wrong this time. There really is such a thing sometimes as an open and shut case. Everything in this murder fits perfectly. Except one thing. What's that? There weren't any scratches on Graham's face. And if he killed the actress, I saw him less than 15 minutes afterward. Ah, that doesn't mean anything. There weren't any scratches on the Morad girl's face either. The doc could be wrong. I don't think he was, though. Why not? I'll tell you when we talk to Graham. Uh, there's his place over on the right. Back again, huh? Hello, Bert. Is the boss in yet? No, he hasn't come back. Don't know when he'll be in. We'll wait. Maybe quite a while. The Lord doesn't mind. The, the Lord? Yeah, Bert. This is Lieutenant McKenzie of the police. What's wrong? Haven't you heard? There was a murder. You don't think the boss... Come on, Brad. We'll wait in that library where the boys found the picture. Show it to us, Bert. Sure. It's uh, right over here. Uh, maybe you'd uh, like a drink or something while you're waiting. Yeah, maybe we would. I'll fix it for you. Here's where they found the picture. Uh-huh. What were you going to tell me out there in the car a minute ago? Why don't you ask me what I found out of the marriage license bureau? Well, what did you find? What are you doing here, Runyon? What's happened? Lieutenant McKenzie here is about to arrest you for murder. Me? But you can't. I I didn't kill Linda. I, I swear I didn't. Mr. Graham, you're under arrest for uh, Wait the... a minute, Mac. Here's Bert with the drinks. Don't you want that first? Here you are. Thanks. Are you out of your mind, Runyon? Not at all. Graham didn't murder anybody. Did he, Archie? What? Archie? Watch, Mac. <coughs> Why, you big... What's the idea of throwing a drink in my face? Grab him, Mac. He's our boy. No, you don't. Let go of me. Hold still, Bert. I'll push you to sleep. Now, watch this handkerchief, Mac, after I wipe the drink off his face. Oh, no, you... Hold still, then. Look. Scratches on his cheeks. Yeah. Fingernail scratches. And look at the handkerchief. What's that? Makeup, Mac. That's why we couldn't see the scratches on his face. He used to be an actor. And he knew how to put it on just right. Bert? An actor? His name isn't Bert. Get the cuffs on me, Mac. Okay, but I still don't get it. Shall I tell him, Archie, or do you want to? I have nothing to say. You're a real ham, aren't you? Well, where's this guy? His real name is Archie Glover. He was married to Linda Lane in 1937. 
He ran out on her a couple of years later and never bothered to get a divorce. That's what I found at the marriage license bureau. But how did you know it was this guy? I didn't, Mac, until just a second ago. I figured that if the murderer wasn't Graham or Sylvia, and I was sure it wasn't either of them, there was only one person left who knew enough about Graham and his affairs to plant everything so carefully. This guy here. How about it, Bert? I have nothing to say. <laughs> A ham to the last. Okay. You can get it out of him at headquarters, Mac. I imagine he went to Linda for money a week or so ago. He saw the picture and recognized his boss and the possibility, so he stole it. Then he wrote the notes which he knew Graham would think came from Linda. She guessed what happened and followed him to the cemetery where he had to kill her. Well, I guess that'll do for this ham. Yeah. And he ought to enjoy the frying pan when they turn the heat on. Hey, and that reminds me, Mac, we haven't had dinner. Let's go over to Charlie's Chop House. Well, that's that. It seems I spend my life in getting into trouble and getting out of it. But at the same time, I generally manage to get some other people in and out of trouble, too. Be seeing you again. So long.